Welcome, my friends, into this journey through the valley of the shadow of mathematics. I'm Dr. Dog, and I will be your guide. In this little video, we're going to begin the broad topic of adding fractions by looking at the subtopic, what are fractions? Love this little quote down here on the bottom that says a guy gave back a two and a half million dollar gift because he hated working with fractions. Man, that really is hating fractions. Well, you may be asking yourself, what are fractions anyway? Fractions uh, are going to require a little foundation before we can understand them. To understand what fractions are, let's begin with an examination of whole numbers. Whole numbers are ways of counting things that are alike. And I want you to count these. Let's start here. And I, I, I'm reminded as I begin this of one of my favorite characters, the count on Sesame Street. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, here's one, two, three. We have three guys here in this video. Let's, let's count these. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six people. Did you count six people? Uh, I want you to notice that in this case you made them alike. You looked at this and you said we have three guys. And in this case you looked at them and you made them alike. You said we have six people. Now remember that things must be alike to be added. Uh, how much is an armadillo plus an apple? Well, it's an armadillo and an apple. How much is an armadillo plus an armadillo? Two armadillos. How much is an apple plus an apple? Two apples. When you looked at these pictures and you began to count, you, in your mind, knew inherently that they had to be alike, so you made them alike. In the first one, you had three guys, and in the second one, you had six people. Now, let us consider the number one, as we've come to understand something about whole numbers, one right here, and the number one right here. Obviously, we began our counting of whole numbers and, and of each of these groups with the number one. So number one is a very, very important number in mathematics. The number one represents one whole object. And here we have the number one written out in symbols, and we will represent it with a picture. And, and what if we had to want to have a part of the whole? Now, before we go back to that having a part of the whole, I don't want you to miss this. Uh, I want you to understand that mathematics is a language of symbols. Do you see this symbol? When you're working with mathematics, you're, you're kind of like a spy because you're working with code that not everybody can read. And, and if you really get good at this, you can amaze your friends and, and, and amaze your parents and grandparents and just really, I mean, be something special. Math is fun, but it's working with a code. This symbol stands for one unit, one, some, one thing. And here I have chosen to represent that thing with a picture of a round circle in 3D. That is one object. And again, we might ask ourselves, what if we won't have a part of the whole? I remember many years ago when my uh, two sisters near to me in age and I had, had uh, found a uh, a couple of pop bottles beside the road, and we took them to the store, and we traded them in for the deposit. Guys, that's a, that's what old people used to do, because they had deposit on those bottles, and, and we bought a Coke, and we bought this little Coke, and we had one Coke, and there was three of us. Well, we had to divide it up, didn't we? Each of us had to take a part. Of course, I was the oldest, and I divided it, and I got the biggest part. I've always been good at math. And what if we want to have part of a whole? Uh, fractions are a way of representing part of a whole. Now, don't let this scare you. You can read this several ways. It can be read as one over three. It could be read as one third, the fraction. That's sometimes used as its short name. This is a symbol. Just like the number one is a symbol, the number one over three means things to mathematicians. Now, the number three, which is down on the bottom, tells how many parts the whole is cut into. In this case, the whole would be cut into three parts. Uh, the top number tells how many of those parts we have. Now let's go back. It's cut into three parts, and we have one of those parts. Let's represent that with a picture. Do you see that this picture, the, the whole that we had, is now cut into three parts? 
and I will quote my hero, the Count, off of Sesame Street. One, ha 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 ha. Two, ha 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 ha. Three, ha 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 ha. Three parts. So we have three parts. This is how many it's cut into. Now, only one of those parts is red. So if we look at how much of this whole is red, if we cut it into three equal parts, then one of them is red. So one third, or one over three, the fraction one third, one over three, parts of the whole are red. That's really not too bad, is it? Here we have a fraction two fifths, two over five. The, the five down on the bottom tells us how many parts the whole is cut into. It's cut into five parts. To quote the count, one, ha, 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 two, ha, 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 three, ha, 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 four, ha, 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 five, ha, 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 ha. It's cut into five equal parts. That's what the bottom number of a fraction tells us. Now, remember the top number tells us how many we have. Two of those parts are red. One, two of those parts are red. So the fraction two fifths, the bottom number says the whole is cut into five equal parts, and the top number tells us how many we have. We have two of them. Now, fractions are a way of dividing a whole into parts and telling how many of those parts you have. Let's consider this fraction, 7 over 8. It is also read as 7 eighths, eighths being the, the number that represents the bottom. Now, this tells us on the bottom how many parts the whole is cut into. The whole is cut into eight parts. The top tells us how many of those parts we have. We have seven of those parts. So the bottom number tells us how many it's cut into. It is called the denominator. The top number is called the numerator. Now you may ask yourself, why do they use names like denominator for the bottom and numerator on the top? Well, that has something to do with the way mathematicians work. We like working with symbols, which are codes that not everybody can understand. So we give them kind of difficult names so that not everyone knows what they are. You now know that the denominator is the bottom number, which tells us how many parts the whole is cut into. The numerator is the top number, which tells us how many we have those parts we have. Go ask your grandparents or your parents or your friends, what's a denominator? And when they don't know, you know what it is. It's how many parts the whole is cut into, and the numerator is how many of those we have. Remember that. The denominator is how many parts the whole is cut into. In this case, the whole is cut into eight parts. The numerator is how many of those parts we have. We have seven parts. It's cut into eight parts, and we have seven of them. Now, isn't that cool? The denominator is the bottom number, which tells how many parts they're cut into, and the numerator is the top number, which tells how many of those parts we have. Now, let's go back and visit our old friend one. It, it is a whole number, which can also be written as a fraction. Remember this picture? This is what one is, one whole object. Now, we can cut it into parts, can't we? Make fractions out of it. But let's look at this one just a minute. We have one whole unit. Now, this whole unit is cut into how many parts? Well, it's not cut into parts. It's, it's cut into one part. It hasn't been divided up, so it is one part. And how many of them do we have? We have one of them. So if we want to write this as a fraction, the number one, we can write it as one over one. And what that means is that it is cut into one part, and we have one of them. Any whole number can be written as a fraction. I want you to consider the number three just a minute. Three is a great number. Now, the number three could be represented as three whole units. Do you see them? Now, let's, let's do the counts thing, which I love doing. One, ha, 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 ha. Two, ha, 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 ha. Three, ha, 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 ha. We have three whole units. Now, we can write that as a fraction three over one. I want you to consider that just a minute. It is cut into one part, and how many of them do we have? We have three of the parts. So it's cut into one part, and we have three of those. So they're cut into one part, and we have three of them. 
What I want you to see is that any whole number can be written as a fraction by placing it over 1 because that whole number is going to have the number of holes that it is, the number of units it is, and each of them is only going to be cut into one part. Now, this, this video is dedicated to all of the grandchildren out there everywhere who are budding mathematicians, who recognize that math is really fascinating. Math is like being a detective, being a spy, understanding code in a special language. And this little precious one is one of my granddaughters, my little granddaughter Reagan, who loves Papa with all of her heart, and who is a budding mathematician, and who, if she wins eight and a half million dollars in the lottery, is going to keep it because she likes working with fractions. I would also like to dedicate this video to my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Willis, who instilled in me a gracious love of fractions who taught all of us in the class that fractions are really fun and that they're enjoyable to work with. You just have to understand them. You just have to know the code. And if you learn the language of fractions, you can have a lot of fun with it. And Mrs. Willis, who was the first teacher that all of us had, who was young and beautiful, we, who, all of the young men of your fifth grade class, forgive you now for getting married in the middle of the year and breaking all of our hearts. We still love fractions, and we still love you for the love, joy of learning that you instilled in our hearts. Again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. I appreciate you watching these videos. I want to help you learn fractions. I want to help you master this content. And in the mantra of the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. And of course, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, unless you and I are in the same competition then it's ever man for himself. You have a blessed day.